Hello, this is Ross, and thank you for joining me ag once again on a bead making video. I'd like to say thank you to everybody who's left comments, everybody who subscribed. That's awesome. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm glad you enjoy my little bead making videos, and I want you to keep in mind that I don't take these too seriously. You shouldn't either. I'm just doing it for fun and sharing. This is the first time I'm going to try splicing something into the middle of this video. I'm going to take the finished product, so when the bead's all done, I'm going to go back and I'm, I'm going to place the image of the bead right in the center of this video. It's the only way I can get the image of the bead to come up as a thumbnail on the YouTube site. It takes a few seconds, a, an image right out of the center of the video, and that's what it posts up. So if you're watching this video along and all of a sudden you get the static image for a minute, don't worry about it. It'll pass, and hopefully that'll show up as the thumbnail for the video. Thank you. Today we're going to do tiger stripe beads. I'm going to turn the camera around and give you some close-ups of these, and we'll get started. Okay, in this video we are going to make tiger stripe beads, something similar to these. I made various sizes and shapes, just as examples. You can do these in solid colors also. Here's a nice a nice teal one. And I made it I made some other ones in sets for other projects. Same same exact process. They're all done exactly the same way. For this demo, <coughs> we're going to use soft glass black, white, um, I've got dark amber, light amber, and a nice clean clear. This happens to be Laosha clear, which is my favorite, but any nice clean clear should work. I've also made some props. These are this is the process of how this this bead is made. Uh, I know that it's hard to see through the flame sometimes, so I've broken this down into steps, all nice and cold, so I can bring them right up in in focus. First thing we're going to do is make a nice bead base. It doesn't have to be. It's okay if it's sloppy. We're going to stack a lot of stuff on top of here, so don't spend a lot of time making your bead base perfectly shaped. Any, I'm going to make this. The bead I'm going to make is going to wind up being. Uh, barrel shaped so I made a roughly barrel shaped center. If you want to make a donut shape just leave it donut shaped. Next thing we're gonna do is pull a stringer. Just a nice straight black and white stringer. And then I'm gonna wrap that stringer right on that bead base. Bring that in focus. I start at one end and I wrap it all the way around until I get to the other end and then I, I end it. And it's still still rough. Okay. Next thing I do is I melt that in, <coughs> melt that all smooth, melt the stringer down, and then I start doing <coughs> a encasement. Now this is just a wrap encasement and these kind of encasements tend to leave a few bubbles in the end product but for the tiger stripes it doesn't really seem to matter. The little bubbles are not noticeable and this is a nice quick way to do an encasement. Uh, you might want not want to do this if you were encasing florals. Um, I, I just cut it off here so I could put it in the kiln and let it cool down. But what I'm doing is I'm, I'm going to heat up, keep the bead out of the flame and make sure most of the heat is hitting this part of the rod and getting it hot and melting it in. I don't want this part of the glass, the bead the stringers that I put down on top of the glass, I don't want that, that to get hot because if it gets too hot when I apply the clear it will smudge and I don't want those lines to smudge. I want them to stay nice and clean and, and discreet. So what I'm doing is I'm just starting at one end with the clear and I'm just wrapping it, wrapping it, and this one I just stopped halfway just so I could get this picture. And remember the flame is not going to be hitting at this intersection right here. The flame is going to be 
hitting up here and some of the radiant heat will be coming down and hitting the bead but mostly you're going to preheat the rod and then just lay it down on top of the bead okay next thing you do is you put that in the flame heat that all in until you have a smooth surface and then we're going to go back and just put random dots of light amber and dark amber over the top of the clear you have to put the clear first and then the amber dots if you do it the other way around the amber dots will sink into the stringer that you've wrapped on there and you'll have a very interesting looking bead but it won't at all be tiger striped it won't be won't be what you expect so you have to put the clear down and then the amber light amber dark amber dots over the top of it now if what you're trying for is one of these solid color beads then instead of the clear you just put down a nice transparent over the black and white so this was a black and white stringer and then I just put a blue over the top of it and then you're done so doing these solid colors is is much easier because you're just taking and and putting a transparent over your uh, stringer wrap bead and and calling it calling it good we'll take another look at those okay let's go ahead and build that bead base got my mandrel with the bead release on it preheated heat up the end of my black and I'm just gonna make a roughly barrel shaped bead base that I'm gonna build on top of I just want to save my stringer. I don't want to build a whole bead base out of stringer because I have to take the time to build the stringer and uh, it's, just, it's just more efficient build on top of something. And generally you don't want to build on top of the white because it's very soft and, and the beads can sometimes tend to crack if you build a bead base out of white. I've seen very nice ones, very nice tiger stripe beads where the center part was made out of the amber rods so that's also good. So what I have here is just this very, you know, very casually made barrel-shaped bead. I'm going to build on top of. Now while the bead's still hot, again, like always, I'm holding the, I'm letting the bead maintain some heat, but I'm holding it underneath the flame and off to the side. Now I have to keep my stringer running along the edge of the flame right down the side so the heat goes into the flame I don't want to push it through the flame otherwise it'll melt too fast and it'll just glob onto the bead so I'm going to start on this end I'm heating up just the contact point of the stringer placing it down and I'm just very carefully letting the, the stringer get to about the melting point of you know taffy or something. I want it to be kind of rubbery when it goes on there. I don't want it to be goopy. I can take this out of the flame for a second. There we go. See I'm laying it down over the top. Oops, I'm gonna have a blemish there. go I'm just gonna melt that back in get my shape back I don't want to let it run I'm just gonna melt that in some people add ivory at this point and that gives a nice effect I I like my lines to stay nice and clean and the ivory will spread and give it kind of a furry effect which is very nice but um, yeah. 
I'm just getting it back into a barrel shape. Find where it's in focus here. Okay. Now I go back and I'm going to clear and case it. Again, it's under the flame. Heating up the clear. Okay, as soon as this gets hot, goopy. And this one I want to be it to be fairly fairly liquid. I don't want the hot clear that I'm applying to the surface to drag glass from underneath it and smear. I'm kind of angling it down so that I'm kind of squeegeeing it into the and overlapping it on the last wrap that I did. I know this is very hard to see because it's all right in the flame. Take it out of the flame again. So I'm just squeegeeing it down as I wrap it. Okay. I've wrapped that end to end. Find where it's in focus here. Bring it up. Melt that in real quick. I take my graphite marving pad at this point. You can use whatever you've got, and I just push the clear down so it makes it makes almost makes contact with the with the mandrel same on the other side I just don't want that white to start sneaking up around the edge sometimes I'll use a tungsten rod for that and just get very careful and push it down okay I'm gonna shape this back into a barrel shape Oops. I will do the final rounding after I have all of the amber on. Now comes the fun part. This I'm just going to push right through the flame. I've got my bead hot, I'm getting my amber hot, and I'm just going to put big dollops right on the surface. Semi at random. the amber, the dark amber. I'm going to go back with the light amber. Put these in between. Ah, it helps to preheat your rod. Sometimes I get in a hurry. Okay. I'm just going to place these in between. I want there to be light patches and dark patches. So I'm not trying to do a, a very even coating. I want it to be splotchy. Okay, I'm going to call that good. I'll take it out. Okay, now it's melted in. Switch hands. I 
Now I've got the heat blasting right on the center of the marble, but I don't want or uh, right on the center of the bead, but I don't want to heat the heat it too much. I'm just going to get the outside hot. Glass is a good insulator, so I'm going to make sure that the outside of the bead gets very hot, but I want to stop just so short of when the inside of the bead starts to move. So I know it's all pretty washed out on the screen, but I'm just getting it to where the outside is starting to flow around, but the inside hasn't moved on me yet. And now I'm going to roll this out. I'm rolling this like it's a tire. I don't want to smear it. I'm just going to let this be fairly rough barrel shape. I want to spend a lot of time on camera. Okay, I'm just heating up one end. I'm going to start bringing one end down to a barrel shape letting the other end of the bead be solid. Okay, just work one end at a time. If you can see that. I'm gonna work on the other side. The side that I'm working on, I'm always pointing down. I want gravity to work with me, not against me. Okay, I've got this end hot, starting to move a little bit. I'm going to roll it out. Move it out of the flame here. Okay, and I can true up the ends. Okay. Now for this demo, I'm going to call this good. We can sit here and finesse this bead for another 20 minutes. Hmm. But I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back and just fire polish it. Do any last bit of shaping. Okay. And I think this is good for today's demo. Let it cool down, take a look at it, and then into the kiln it goes. Let some of the heat come out. Still pretty hot. Well, I got a little bit of a smudge in there, but it's the way things go. Okay, thank you very much for joining me, and that's all for this demo.